One of my favorite pieces of today's celebration is the Shelby Park History Exhibit that's been curated by Jim Hubler from the Tennessee State Museum. This exhibit is in the Vinnie Lynx Clubhouse and has a tremendous number of historical photos from the park's past. We've been fortunate to have wonderful sponsors that have supported us so that we can host today's celebration. They include Yazoo Brewery, who is sponsoring our beer tent in the event field, East Nasty Running Club, Martin's Corner and the Shops on Fatherland, the Silly Groose Restaurant, Wonders on Woodland, Vince Gill and Amy Grant, and our board secretary, Pat Gray, who gave a very generous gift in memory of her grandparents, Gracie and Prentice Hackney, and Bessie and George Gray. Finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank a few of the many people that have made this day possible. Our event chairs, Carol Williams and Pat Gray. Our event coordinator, Mona Lisa Warren. And the entire Friends of Shelby board the Metro Arts Commission, and Lawrence Argent. Also, George Anderson, Chairman of the Board of Parks and Recreation. The entire Metro Parks Department who have worked, with, worked so hard to provide us with this beautiful space on this very special day. And Mayor Carl Dean, and the entire Mayor's Office for their continuing support. Now I'd like to introduce someone who has deep roots within Shelby Park and has been a wonderful supporter of our efforts. Metro Parks Director, Mr. Tommy Lynch. Yeah, this is a great day for East Nashville and a great day for Nashville and especially a great day for all of you who can start really enjoying this park at a level that maybe reaches back to its origins a hundred years ago. Coming out here, I sort of thought the more things change, the more things remain the same. And when you read about the history of the development of this park, it was to connect people to nature, to provide walking paths for the community so that they could get good exercise. And that was 100 years ago. Today, we're here doing, in essence, the exact same thing. This is a thrilling day for me, and I've sort of had the unique pleasure of being someone who worked in the park I spent a little time playing over there on the baseball fields and the old softball fields, but I also had the unique distinction I actually lived in the park for about four years. And uh, it's great to come back and be here today as part of this celebration. With that, I really have to acknowledge several of our employees and several of the people who made this day happen. Uh, Tim Nate, our park planner, is here today, and he's worked a lot on the master plan and the implementation of the master plan. <laughs> Rebecca Rotz, our park planner, has been, done so as well, and she also is someone who lives in East Nashville and will be enjoying the facility. <laughs> I can't come out here without thinking that Two years and five months ago, we wouldn't have been able to access any of this park on this side had we not had a kayak. And at that time, after the May flood, one of the most interesting stories that I heard happened with our nature center manager, Denise Wire. She was concerned about her facility and the way she checked on her facility is she got her kayak and she canoe or kayak out to check on Shelby Bottoms. And it was really sort of the testament to the type of employees that we have in the parks. They truly try to do as much as they can and they love what they're doing. And Denise is just one of the many employees of the parks department that is totally invested in Shelby. With that, I need to acknowledge Mr. Gary Hawkins with Hawkins Partner, who was the designer of this phase one. <laughs> Kyle Armstrong and Jim Hunter with Barron and Dowdle, our contractors. <laughs> and a good department, it's like the Parks Department is, is managed by a wonderful park board, some dedicated citizens who volunteer their time to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do for you. 
Um, I want to take um, Tommy and George and the entire Parks team. This is really, truly a collaboration. Um, several years ago, um, the Metro Arts uh, Commission created a strategic framework for activating community gathering places through public art. And in the last nine months, we've installed works at the Goodlitzville Library and McCabe Park Community Center. And in the coming year, we plan to install 16 additional neighborhood-based works of public art by local and regional artists. Um, we are thrilled to continue that today here in my backyard, literally my house is up the hill, um, uh, with reflection in Shelby Park. Projects like this really are about daily collaborations between the artist and the neighborhood and the neighborhood and the larger community. And I'd like to take a moment to thank a couple of people who've made this possible. Friends of Shelby, um, in addition to being a huge steward of this green space, um, has always been a strong advocate for the integration of art in the park. Um, and there are a handful of people, particularly in the master planning process, who really drove that home, including Christine Kryling, Carol Williams, um, Pat Gray, and also council members Peter Westerholm and Anthony Davis, as well as Vice Mayor Diane Neighbors, have always been tireless about the fact that our parks can and should be beautified by public art. Um, I want to thank them because I'm quite sure without all those people, um, this beautiful work would not have come to, to, to pass. Um, artists are selected through a competitive process overseen by citizens and neighbors, and that's one of the fantastic parts about public art in our community. Um, and almost all of them, I see them out here, are there today, and I'd like to specifically thank the citizens who volunteered their time to review artist proposals and ensure that Lawrence was selected for this um, site, including Jeff Ackerman, Herb Williams, Anderson Williams, Gracie Porter, Mary Vavra, Alfredo Vergara, Mac Hill, and Jan Hattelberg, all East Nashvillians, all artists and art supporters, um, and longtime residents of this wonderful neighborhood. Um, <laughs> Gary has been thanked profusely, but Gary Hawkins has a great vision, and um, uh, I think this uh, space, which I jog in often, is greatly enhanced by his overall design. There are other subcontractors like Beard Property and Stancil Electric and Barry Breshack who work tirelessly directly with the artists and with our team to make sure that the site really is enhanced by the work. And I would like to thank a, per a personal note of pr privilege to thank my team, um, Jeffrey Aldridge and Carrie Logan, who literally have been out here in hip waders for the last couple weeks, um, making sure that the, the work, the rain, doesn't affect what you see today. Um, and Rebecca Ratz, thank you too, um, greatly. Um, the best public art collections in the world are those that are full of diversity. Diversity of medium, diversity of type, um, from conceptual to figurative, abstract to pop. And one of our goals in Nashville as we build a world-class public collection is to diversify the caliber and quality of artists that come in and show their work in our collection. I was absolutely stunned, thrilled, and super duper excited um, when Lawrence Argent responded to the artist call and was ultimately selected by our um, commission his work is known world over for its vibrancy and intellectualism. His work is bold and approachable and yet incredibly well-crafted. He weaves a story of place into a larger story about the human condition in every work that he produces. It is my deep pleasure um, to introduce Lawrence Argent to tell you a little bit about his work, Reflection. Thank you, Jen, and uh, thanks everybody for coming here today. Um, and we do have a bit of sunshine, which is wonderful to enjoy this place, this park, that uh, I was astounded when I first came here to sort of see what this environment was uh, going to be. And uh, with Hawkins' partnership and uh, seeing the plan for the future and what we can do, I was incredibly enthused by the possibility of being able to create something for this place that could create a mark, a sense of history, a sense of place, and has a sense of longevity for the future that we all can share and enjoy and in some ways that we all can have accessibility to the idea about what we think art is the nature of being able to reflect upon ourselves the piece is called reflection but in this particular environment it has to do with who we are and the nature of a sense of history and perhaps we become one as we become a reflection of each of those pieces that are in the wall and the bird itself, the mockingbird. So it has to do with the sense of place, it has to do with a sense of history, it has to do with how we engage and how we open up, open up ourselves to many possibilities of looking at perhaps where we are. And through that, we engage in another possibility of an experience that can illuminate 
and can stimulate uh, for the present state of who we are, but in the future of many generations to come. So I'm, I'm enthralled by being here, and there are many thanks that everybody's given everybody, and I can't tell you enough for the, the process that it takes to be able to get to this place where we finally see something that one creates. It's not just me. There are many, many, many people along the journey that help me and uh, facilitate the process, including all the people from the Arts Commission who dedicated their, their waiters and everything else to be able to move through this process of what we have here that did take a lot of um, entanglement and uh, um, possibility to move forward that actually now we have and we can embrace this, this work in a very magical moment, I think. So I hope you all enjoy it. I hope you'll enjoy it for years to come. I hope your families will enjoy it for many years to come. And thank you. Um, this is a wonderful day, and let me first acknowledge a couple of people who are here from the Metro Council. Ronnie Stein is here, Peter Westerholm is here, and I also want to say a real special word of thanks um, to Diane Neighbors, our great vice mayor. Um, this project... <laughs> this project uh, would have happened in time without Diane, but it certainly wouldn't happen on the schedule that it's happened. And I can tell you when the vice mayor is an advocate for a project, the project moves from being a very interesting special project to probably the most compelling project in the city. So Diane, thank you for all you do for the entire city, but particularly for what your interest in this park and in making sure this project occurred. You know, this is a great symbol of what you try to do in a city, that, that what makes a city special, and that's the quality of life. You know, we work hard every day on issues like public education, we work hard on public safety, we work hard on economic development. We want to see the city grow, we want to see it prosper. But you do that because you want to create a certain quality of life. You want to create an atmosphere where people can pursue happiness and, and, and as families enjoy a city and be in a space that is truly special. And parks are such a critical part of that. Parks like this, uh, and parks with this distinguished history and birds flying over and speeches um, are just something you can't replace. And so whether it's the investment that was made here or the investment that we made through the open space plan and the Cornelia Ford Airport and, and adding that to Shelby Bottoms, these are the things that make government service, these are the things that make community special. So this is a real good day. And it's a good day because our children for years and years and years will be able to, to enjoy this. And this area will be preserved and will be a special part of our city. It'll also be part of one of the things we need to do in Nashville and we need to get right is we need to be a city that is active. We need to be a city that's healthy. We need to be a city that appreciates the outdoors and people getting exercise and enjoying all the beautiful things we have to offer. Um, and this city will continue to do that, and we'll be walking today if you've got some time at 1130 to walk with us uh, to make this city active. And then finally, um, I think this public art piece is just incredible. I mean, I, I can't be more proud to stand here and look over at something that people will be talking about around the country, people will be looking at for years and years to come and it will be a gathering place, a place to meet, a place where people will talk about its significance and the meaning of it. It is an incredible addition to our city. So thank you, Lawrence, very much, Mayor, very much for this and thank you to the Arts Commission for all your hard work on this. And congratulations to the friends of Shelby Park. I want to lastly mention them because ultimately all good things come from the citizens of a city because what they care about gets reflected in what happens in a city. And there have been people who have cared about this park for years and years and years, who have worked and who have dreamed, and now some of those dreams are becoming reality, but they led their way. And so on behalf of all the people of Nashville who are going to enjoy this park, thank you to the friends of Shelby Park for what you've done. Thanks.